I'm Ini Laj and I'm here inside the Hub Culture Studio, our brand new studio. What do you think about it? Do you like it? It's awesome. It's, it's great, awesome. right? Yeah, very scenic. Thank you very much. Still. Exactly. Dr. Solomon Asafa, you're the director of IBM Research in Africa. You've been doing some incredible research and some work on financial inclusion. And I wonder if you could tell me about that. Sure. So around the world, there's over 1 billion people that are either underbanked or completely unbanked. So what we're trying to do is pro provide ways for them to have financial inclusion. So what this 1 billion people have is actually their mobile phone. So we look at some of the transactions that they do, for example, buying airtime, you know, some of their calls and some of the transactions that they do. And we can actually use over 100 uh, points or data points to figure out uh, their credit worthiness and also how much you know, credit limit that they could get. So give so, me an example of how that would work. So for example, right, uh, you can look at you know, somebody's uh, transactions on the phone and you know, based on that, uh, connect them to a microloan provider mm -hmm. so that they can actually be able to afford you know, school for their children or mm -hmm. use that you know, credit that they get to buy medication uh, for their children once again, or for small shops, uh, give them access, financial access, so that they can be able to, you know, buy more goods that they can sell and get more profit. And what kind of implication does that have? What kind of uh, impact have you had just in the recent years that you've been doing it's, that? It's significant. Uh, to get this uh, going, obviously we work with a lot of telcos and a lot of banks, and by doing that we have already impacted over three million people. Uh, and Incredible. You know, three million people being financially included mm. and being able to ac have access be it a dollar a day or ten dollars a day makes significant impact on people's lives. You've also been working in another area of sustainable development within uh, solar panels yes. uh, in Kenya and tell me how what you, about the app that you've developed yes. uh, and what and what you've managed to do there. So just to put it on con in context mm. over 80 percent of Africa is unelectrified and there's over 600 million people that actually that don't have access mm. to the grid. Right. At the same time, uh, there is more of an uptick when it comes to uh, u utilization of solar cells and uh, solar energy. What's most important is to actually enable people to be able to configure their systems. Right. So what we have done is developed an app that's freely available to anyone actually in the world. And all you have to do is use that app, uh, put a new address, and then say, what I want to power is perhaps a fridge, uh, two lamps, and then maybe my radio. Right. That's all the information that's needed. Mm. In the background, we have AI-driven, uh, artificial intelligence-driven algorithms that actually go out and configure the system for you. They tell you what kind of solar panel you need, what kind of inverter you need, what kind of battery you need. And on top of that, now we're working on mechanisms for people then to go and be connected to suppliers so that the suppliers can provide it to them and also come and install it to them. So we're taking the complexity out of mm. the system so that people can just have very, very easy access. How concerned are people about privacy in the, in the markets that you deal with in Africa? Well, we have to be very careful mm. when it comes to privacy. So any data that we touch is fully anonymized. And also we, ha we apply the best security algorithms and uh, pro processes in order to make sure that everything we do is very secure. Tell me about how you're helping uh, Kenya's rating as well by the World Bank. Yes, so that's also a very interesting story and it has been a three-year journey uh, working you know, with the Kenyan government. And what we're doing is helping them improve their World Bank ease of doing business uh, ranking. Mm -hmm. so Which impacts what? Just tell me that. So basically what that does is uh, make, it, make the country much friendly for foreign direct investment, mm -hmm. but also make it very friendly to start new businesses in the country. In order to make that happen, obviously, you have to create more efficiency in government services, cut down the amount of time it takes to get permits, uh, the amount of money it actually takes you know, to get those permits, and really cut down the inefficiency. But to make that happen, one, you have to apply some methodologies, but also in the back of it, you've got to be willing to apply some of the latest technologies and do IT implementations. Mm. So we have been working with them for three years, and we have helped them improve over 52 points in the last three years uh, together. Incredible. Dr. Safa, thank you so much for stopping by the Hub thank Culture you. Pavilion here in the snow. Thank you. And I'm Edie Lush.